and welcome back to the shop. Um, this is a short little video that I'm preparing for you guys about um, reciprocal drills. In particular, this one here that I just got. The uh, person that was selling it online, this was not as shiny when I got it, uh, showed it and showed that it would open, but it would only go in so far. Um, and there was a, quite a bit that was still exposed. Um, I got it anyway because I didn't have one of these. And as you can see by some of the other ones I have, I have quite a collection. This was uh, attracted me because it's a rosewood handle and you unscrew this part. And these are fairly common that have the drill bits in here. But generally, they're just a... Uh, 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 they have a little screwdriver and a little chisel and things in here and you use it without this spring this this uh, reciprocal action Generally, it's just a all-in-one tool type thing, but so uh, this was what came and I suspected there was some issue in here because it had no uh, no spring on it So uh, you can see that when you drop it it, it just opens up, but when you push it back uh, it, it, the only reason that it's going back is because of gravity, but if I do it this way, you see it won't, it won't uh, spring back, and it should. So I got it, and um, I polished it a little bit, and I cleaned it up, and I removed this screw here and the uh, ferrule, and then I unscrewed this, and what I discovered inside was uh, these pieces of spring that used to be in there, and, um, and you see they were brittle and they broke up into these little pieces and they wedged, wedged in themselves in there. And so I had to dig them out. There's also a little um, T-bolt that uh, uh, was inside. And, um, and what that was supposed to do is when the uh, spring got pushed back, this was wider and it would, um, it would keep the, the spring from catching. So uh, this was broken inside there, as you can see. And so I'm going to do something about that. Um, and let me show you what I did. So I want to show you a close-up of this action here. Um, this is where I removed the screw. And, and it's important that that screw comes out first before you put a wrench to this part and unscrew this. The reason is that there's a hole inside the threaded piece that this screw has to align with. Now you can see how tiny it is. It's very small, but it will not go in and screw in without the proper alignment of this being tight enough in that threaded area for the screw to actually go in. It'll only float on top. So when it's put back together, you have to make sure this is good and snug and that the hole in the side of this threaded area is in alignment with this hole. So first you remove this screw, this port, and then <coughs> you can put a wrench onto these two flat surfaces here and unscrew this whole portion here. And the ferrule doesn't have to be removed, but you can. Um, it's just sort of sitting there, but it's, it's, the opening is wider than this portion. So this will come out without you having to remove the ferrule, but the screw itself must be removed because you see here on the threaded portion, that's where that allows that screw to go deep in there and, and prevent this from turning it. So it sort of serves two purposes. So you, you want to make sure that you take that screw out first and then unscrew this portion. And um, this is the part that turns this spiral portion. And here's the back of this, and that sits in against that little T-bolt that I was talking about. And um, so when this goes in and out, the spring pushes it. But as I said, that's, that's the part that was all broken up in there. So um, let, me, uh, let me go to that next phase of what I did. Once I had pulled out the spring and the T-bolt and everything, that's when I realized that I needed to replace this spring because it was so brittle. Now, um, th this is too short with these pieces missing, and, and I'm afraid also that that's going to be fairly brittle and break as well. 
So, uh, barring that, I called Granger. I went down to Granger. Uh, Granger is a hardware company around uh, the United States, and um, and I bought from them a three pack of these springs. And um, you have to make sure that they're compression springs um, because they do also sell springs that have little loops on each side, and those are very tight here, and they won't compress. They they work by pulling inward. So you would attach one to a hook and one to another hook, and then it would pull whatever you want in to it. These are used to compress, and there's a gap between the spirals, so it's important that you get the right ones. And, um, and so I bought a three pack of these for $7, and um, I just cut the length off that I wanted with these. And um, the way I measured the length was to use the original spring and to line up all the little pieces that were missing to see what length it needed to be. And then I realized that since this was broken off, this should be a, uh, a T. Let me bring that in closer for you to where you can see it. Um, this is the rod that goes inside it, but you see that it was a T shape, but that T shape is now gone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue this washer, which actually fits into the hole, not snugly, but but nice, nicely over the spring. I'm gonna glue this to this. And I thought about making a new rod on the lathe, and I could do that, but it seems to me that this might work just as fine. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put it in a vise and put some glue there and let it sit overnight, and we'll see how that goes. So the T-bolt, that seems nice and solid with the washer glue to the top. And I added a, I added a second washer um, into it um, with a smaller hole. And uh, the glue, it's interesting, is sort of cushiony. So I'm not sure how that's gonna wind up working. Um, it dried overnight. And, um, but we'll try it out. And then here's the other one, the, the one that I made. Um, and I just colored it with a Sharpie. There's no real reason for it to be dark like the other one. But, um, so we'll see how either of them works and then I'll do a permanent one. But for the sake of this video, these are the temporary tests. So we'll try it out and see how it works out. Um, Let's close this up so the drill bits don't, uh, don't uh, disappear and fall out in the middle of what we're working on. And um, here's our spring. So we'll start with the, uh, this is what I meant by how it caps the spring and prevents the spring um, from riding up around it and then getting jammed. And um, that one works. And that one works, either one. And um, so we'll tr let's try the wooden one first. Put that in and drop it into there. And then um, put this piece on. And um, make sure that the ferrule, the hole on the ferrule is lined up with a hole in the, in the, um, in the wood. Right, and so when you pull this down, you can watch in the hole, and you'll see when you get to the point that you no longer see the threads. 
um, then you know that you've got this tight enough. And it's not enough to do finger tight because I still see threads in there. So we'll put the wrench on it. We'll tighten her up even a little more. And uh, keep an eye on that hole. Till we see the threads disappear. And there they are. They're gone. And that means that hole is now ready to take and, the uh, screw. It's working. It's working very well. It's working very well. And that's with the... Uh, that's the one with the, with the wooden piece in it. So um, let's take it out. And um, see how it looks in there. See if the wooden piece is uh, holding up at all. And the wooden piece looks fine. Um, but we'll pull that out and we'll put this one in that we glued that piece to. So there's that washer on top. Drop that in. <clears throat> and if this works, I probably will just leave it in, but, um, we'll see how it goes. So we tighten it. People are going to think I have termites in my bench. That worked fine as well. Let me show you this little fluted bit that we're working with here, and it just goes nicely in. See, there's two flutes, one on each side. And um, so that's working out real well. Well, makes really fast work of it. And um, Let's check out and see what this looks like, the one with the washer. And um, we'll see how it's holding up. That looks fine. So I'm going to put it back in there and we'll leave it in there. And um, we'll close this thing up. I'll take the T one that I made and I'll make uh, maybe another one later. But I think for now we don't really need it. I think it's working fine. I'll keep that one around. There's the, the hole, no threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna put a drop of glue in there. Now, the glue that I'm putting in there is, is just to uh, help snug it up a little bit. Um, so a little dab of glue, because the threads are still working, but um, I think it could probably use, it won't hurt to have a little support in there um, when it, it hardens up. And you see the screw goes in nicely and tightens up. Clean up that extra glue. And I think we're there. Here it is, all finished. Feeling pretty good about it. I uh, put some uh, Alfie Shine wax over uh, most of the parts, including the brass and the uh, steel spiral portion. Um, now I'm just sort of buffing that out a little bit, get more of a shine and show you a little close-up of it. I'm uh, pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, and, and I wanted to show you when I said I didn't have one of these, <clears throat> the, what I didn't have was a reciprocal drill like this or a push drill 
that had this storage portion. I have other um, push drills, um, but but none with that storage portion. Um, I put a little grease in here just to uh, take up any kind of friction issues there might be. Ready to add this to the wall, uh, but let me show you. Uh, let me show you um, some of these other types. There are different types here. Um, there are several different types. Some that have the exposed spiraling. Um, others that have it encased inside these sleeves, so you don't, uh, you can't catch your fingers on them. But they basically work the same, pushing. And um, and this one here has a different type of system for getting the drill out. Here are the different sizes of the drills that are kept inside here. And with this one, you just take this and you turn it till you put it in front of the one that you want. And then you turn it over and you take the drill out. And, um, and when you don't want to uh, have anything fall out, you turn it to the part that has the pin. This one has that same system at the top. Um, and, uh, and is almost identical to it. You can see that one springs nicely. Um, this is also another one, but um, what I, I found interesting is this one, the wooden one that I just repaired, had no marks on it for a brand name, but the, uh, the top part here is almost identical, the Chucks. And, um, and this company that made this one is, um, they're hard to read. Um, I may have to get out a magnifying glass. Goodall Pratt. So this is Goodall Pratt. I suspect this is Goodall Pratt. And the next thing I'll do is I'll go to the catalog the, and I'll see if it's in there. Um, a great find. I'll show you some of the other drills too when we step inside the tool. So I checked out my good old Pratt uh, 1905 catalog and I, I didn't find exactly this drill in there. I did notice though that they refer to them as automatic drills and um, these are considered fluting bits. They're called fluting bits in there, the, with the, the drill bits with the two flutes on each side. Um, so there's always something you can learn each time. Um, this is a reprint of that catalog, that 1905 catalog. But I didn't find anything in there exactly like this. I did find one very similar, but without this uh, part that you can open up to get to the drill bits. So I'm still not sold that it's definitely good El Pratt, but uh, there's a big possibility that it is. Uh, to show you a variety of different things, it would take too long to actually go into detail on a lot of these, but as you can see, most of these up here are screwdrivers. This is a uh, Yankee 130A box for a, a, a screwdriver, a spiral ratchet screwdriver. And um, this is a Miller's Falls box for an automatic drill. Reciprocating drills are, uh, are, are more like this that have um, uh, sort of an Archimedes open uh, area and you slide this back and forth and it creates the circular motion that you need. The big difference in uh, the screwdrivers up here and the drills down here is that the screwdrivers take different bits like flathead screwdrivers or, um, or Phillips bits as well. And, um, and they go in, there's a little uh, a pressure point in there with a groove in the, in, the, um, in the bit, in the screwdriver bit that it hooks into, and then a flat portion of the bit that keeps it going around with the drill and not just free, free uh, swinging around. Um, so most of these are the screwdrivers. These are the drills, and the way to tell the big difference are the chucks, the, these chucks hold drills. That being said, they did make some of these with bits that would go into the screwdriver heads and they had the matching 
top of the uh, of the drill bit to match the same as the screwdriver bits so that you could use drill bits in the screwdrivers um, on the ones that are designated specifically push drills or automatic drills those have chucks that uh, tighten for uh, drill bits um, some of them have different types of chucks with four jaws that come into grooves on the uh, on the bits and others just take any kind of bit put in there and then we'll tighten to them but um, some of them have uh, multiple uh, screw areas uh, or spirals that go up inside each other others this crisscross ratcheting method um, and then the other ones that are hidden inside so there's a variety of these and what you have to do is um, take a look at what you find and uh, see what type of bits they are whether to determine whether they're screwdrivers or, or push drills or automatic drills. And, um, but I do suggest you look at these when you're at a yard sale or something because they're very, very useful. And um, I think you'll find uh, that uh, repairing them are fairly easy, uh, is fairly easy. Um, there are little differences in them. This one has that single spiral, but you can see this one here has um, has a double spiral. So you can see that it uh, how much shorter it gets, and it folds up and then locks, and you can put that in your uh, in your toolbox. But this is a screwdriver um, because it doesn't have the chuck to hold the bit. So the screwdriver, screwdriver. Um, this one here has the chuck and um, so it is very similar to those other ones like this one right next to it but it is definitely a, uh, a a screwdriver here but here's what's interesting is there's a another chuck here so you can pull this this is an adapter for a smaller bit so they all have different um, things to note about them anyway <clears throat> I, I hope you got something out of this session um, I enjoyed it. I'm glad to have this back functioning again. Plenty of spring in it and, um, and not a, a very difficult repair really. Anybody uh, can do it and um, once you know certain things to remove the screw first then unscrew this and then you can get to the middle portion. Um, they're easily cleaned up. They're handsome tools and they work extremely well. So I hope that when you see these in yard sales and things you'll buy them because they're very good functioning tools and, um, and you can fix them and, and bring them up to snuff. And um, they're really great when you wanna just uh, start a hole for a screw or something like that, instead of using a, uh, an awl or, uh, or a gimlet that you have to push in and try to screw in, these make fast and easy work out of it. So I hope you, uh, you enjoyed the video and, uh, and uh, you'll subscribe and uh, come back and visit again. Thanks.